my name is uh, Dr. Eli Ganim. I uh, recently joined uh, UAB Highlands Hospital approximately three years ago. I do mostly hip and knee replacements. We're going to talk today about same-day joint replacement. It's a new topic, something new being done. We're going to, uh, you know, give you some background information, and we're hoping to introduce this uh, to the community around uh, UAB Birmingham as well as the entire Alabama state. Uh, something about my practice, I do mostly hip and knee replacements, uh, partial replacements as well for the knees if you're interested in that, as well as um, uh, the anterior approach or the approach from the front of the hip uh, for hip replacements. Uh, we also do a lot of complex hip and knee redo surgeries uh, for the community as well as for many states. We have patients coming in from Tennessee as well as Florida, as Georgia, and Mississippi uh, for second and third opinions sometimes. So the recovery after uh, joint replacement has improved. Uh, we used to keep patients uh, in the hospital for three or four days. This was approximately 10, 15 years ago. Uh, currently we keep patients uh, mostly one night. Uh, that's usually on average. Uh, they walk the same day, uh, they do therapy. Some folks are walking uh, in the halls with their walkers and the therapists uh, are trying to catch up to them uh, basically. Uh, but it differs from one person to another. Some people have more muscle reserve uh, and so they are able to recover a little bit faster. On average, it takes about a month and a half, sometimes up to two months uh, in some patients. So we've done a great job in terms of bringing the length of stay down from three, four days where you stay in bed for, for those nights and then maybe even stay in bed for another week or so to really getting patients up and going and walking. And so we thought, you know, if we brought down the length of stay where you only spend a night in the hospital, can we get some patients home? And we came up with that idea after looking at for example, knee scopes. Uh, a lot of patients do have knee scopes or ACL reconstructions when they were younger and they tore their ACL. Uh, these about two, 20 years ago, probably maybe 30, uh, when they were first being done, patients used to stay in the hospital for a day, sometimes two. Now everything is being done as outpatient. You have the surgery done, you go home the same day. So we thought, you know what, why can't this be done for certain patients for hip and knee replacements? Um, so it would definitely need a collaboration. That's something new. Uh, not a lot of centers across the country, especially even in the South, are doing it. So we wanted to do a collaboration with our uh, friends uh, from anesthesia, nursing, therapy, case management, and of course our administrators in the hospital. We have an experienced team of nurses and therapists as well. Um, and so the goal would be to have you do the surgery in the morning and then have you home uh, in the afternoon, hopefully around 3 or 4 p.m. when you can leave the hospital. Uh, that's our goal, and of course, that would require a lot of collaboration between the different entities from anesthesia to nursing staff and therapy. And so we have a dedicated team of uh, nurses, uh, orthopedic nurses. They deal with mostly orthopedic issues. Uh, at 5 Main and 5 North, that's at Highlands Hospital. The fifth floor is dedicated for mostly orthopedics. That's what most of our, what's, that's what uh, the nurses do. That's what uh, they're trained to do. And so same thing with therapy. We have a dedicated therapy team that also accompanies them that deals with uh, orthopedic uh, problems, uh, including hip and knee replacements. And so we worked with our colleagues in anesthesia. Uh, we have dedicated staff uh, of uh, anesthesia attendings that do mostly hip and knee surgeries. Uh, they are trained to do spinals, which uh, basically it numbs up your legs for about two hours and then it wears off and then you can walk after uh, the surgery. And we've developed a very good working relationship with them. We've published uh, in the past year two or three manuscripts. Um, and like I said, uh, we've, we've developed a very good post-operative uh, multimodal pain protocol, which involves a lot of medications. We give you the, the effect of different receptors on your nerves. Uh, so you have um, minimal pain after the surgery. And of course, we do nerve blocks. And as you can see in the bottom of the screen here, the gentleman doing a nerve block in this patient's thigh is done under ultrasound and our anesthesia attendings do that before you enter uh, the surgery. This helps definitely with a lot of pain control, uh, pain issues you may have after the, the replacement. So from a same day surgery standpoint, can we do this safely? We don't wanna, you know, we don't wanna create harm. It's one of the things we are taught in med school. Uh, we wanted to make sure that it's safe. We don't wanna have you come back with readmissions or complications. And so there's certain medical criteria that we wanna focus on to make sure that it's safe for you. So it's not gonna be for everyone. There are some patients that are too sick um, that just don't have enough musculoskeletal reserve or, or energy to do this. Uh, they may be a little bit debilitated and so it may not apply to them. And so we looked at the literature. Some centers up in the Northeast uh, and uh, West Coast have been uh, trying this out uh, for about three or four years. And so early on, it, the results were not that good. Uh, the results from the Humana database, which is a big, 
big database nationwide showed that there was higher rates of infections and complications. And that was because, again, they were trying it on everybody. It wasn't selective uh, trialing of patients. Uh, same thing with this recent one in 2017. So everything started to come out in 2017 from a big registry of NISQIP. And so they found patients with higher weight, diabetes, older age, more than 85, are prone to have issues. So we were learning with time as time went by. And so we developed a scoring system that, uh, to really fine tune who is gonna do well after this uh, same day surgery. And so it progressed to the point that uh, recently we have no difference in uh, outcomes in 30 days or even 90 days or show that patients who go home the same day do much better. So uh, it has definitely improved from the trialing of 2015, 2016, leading into now 2018 up to 2020, it's, uh, the results have improved dramatically. So we came up with our list of criteria that we have. Um, it's a checklist. It's very conservative. Uh, it goes through your medical um, uh, history and uh, anybody with lung issues, heart, stents, um, diabetes, insulin dependent, uh, prior infections, uh, urinary uh, bladder issues uh, are excluded from the same day uh, replacement uh, protocol. Um, other exclusion, again, advanced age more than 85, heavy weight, uh, chronic uh, narcotic use, uh, because pain, pain, post-operative pain is a big uh, issue that we sometimes run into with uh, patients taking chronic narcotics. The biggest issue here is, is the patient and the family. If they are motivated and want to do that, there may be sometimes logistical problems with the, in the family or the patient. They cannot do the same day. They have to spend the night, which is fine. Um, sometimes there's not enough social support at home. Uh, the patients don't have uh, family at all, or even friends nearby. And so the other issue is uh, if you live far off, uh, patients from, uh, for example, Mobile or Northern uh, Florida or up in, in the Gatlinburg area may not be able to participate since they live five or six hours away. Uh, that being said, we are looking into possibly affiliating with our hotels nearby, the Hilton and Doubletree, which UAB has a good collaboration with to potentially accommodate patients who come from uh, three, four, or five hours away, uh, in which we put them in the hotel overnight and then the second, the following day they can go home. Um, we do have a, a very strict discharge criteria. You need to meet these criteria to be able to discharge home. Uh, you need to walk 150 feet. 150 feet, which means you would be able to walk inside the house unlimited. There would be no restrictions. You'll be able to do whatever you want inside the house and even do a little bit of walking outside. That's what 150 feet translates to. Um, you need to be stable medically. Uh, you need to have at least urinated once. Uh, from a pain control, you need to have it pain, uh, controlled well enough to be able to ambulate, do therapy. And of course, your walker or your cane needs to be uh, set up for you so you can take it home. So some patients don't always go home. Uh, and similar to us, I think one in five of our patients also end up staying the night. Uh, some of the reasons, and this has been looked into in Philadelphia, one of the big centers that does same day surgery, this was about two years ago. A lot of it relate to, for example, uh, urinary problems, there's retention, they're not urinating. They may have had a history of urinary problems. Dizziness, nausea, vomiting, uh, inability to take uh, oral, um, uh, oral fluids and liquids and sometimes pain that's not controlled. But the main driver is sometimes patient preference. Uh, the patient changes their mind. Uh, they wanna stay the night. Sometimes a logistical issue pops up with the family. And again, these are all okay. And then you always have the backup of staying one night in the hospital and go home the next day, as we do for most of our patients. So what happens after you get discharged? You get a phone call on day one and day two. Uh, Amy, my nurse currently does, does all this. We are working hopefully to get a nurse navigator that can be dedicated for joint replacement patients uh, that they can call those patients, not just the same day patients, but pretty much all the patients to make sure they're doing well on those first and second days. The, the question that always pops up, if you get readmitted, the, the chances are about two to 3%, which is not bad. It's uh, nationwide, sometimes it averages about four or 5% if you are not a same day patient. So uh, from a literature standpoint on what we see, uh, the readmission rates are quite low. But if you are about two thirds of the times, it's mostly medical, stomach issues, uh, sometimes blood clots, urine infections, and the risk factors, again, if the patient has lung problems, um, they're not very functional, they're a bit debilitated, um, and if the case was very complex, and that's why, again, we filter these things out before we uh, bring up same-day surgery program to you. 
Currently we're doing uh, uh, total knees. We've been doing it for about a year or so. Uh, we've done, uh, we do approximately one to two total knees uh, a week. Uh, we started recently doing total hips after it was approved uh, in end of November, early December by Medicare uh, to be done as outpatient. And so we've done, we performed our first total hip outpatient uh, approximately a week and a half ago. Um, and um, and uh, we've, been, we've had great success. There's minimal complication readmission rates. Uh, and the goal would be to try to do about a third of our hip and knee replacements um, as same day. Now that being said, uh, most of the same days, are, if not all of them are now occurring at Highlands Hospital. We do have goals and a plan in one to two years to possibly branch out and to perform same day surgery in our uh, surgery center, outpatient center at uh, uh, 119. Um, and so we are planning to possibly do that in about one to two years once the logistics and the setup is completed there. And so talking about you know outpatient uh, surgery, um, some centers do them in the hospital, some are doing them in surgery centers. The complication rates are pretty much the same and that's why we're very motivated to, uh, to start doing these at our uh, surgery center because it will give us the same results um, and uh, uh, without being in the hospital. And so in summary, uh, number one is to do quality first, uh, do no harm. Uh, that's our goal. Uh, it's always looking at outcomes, readmissions, make sure the pain's controlled, that you're not having any issues. And so it's a team effort from anesthesia, nursing, therapy, case management, uh, coming together and uh, trying to uh, supply the best care we can. And that's why we have our quality meetings every month to go over any um, uh, roadblocks or any issues that pop up, uh, whether for same day surgery patients or for any issues that may uh, come along. Thank you.